Live from San Jose, it's theCUBE. Presenting Big Data Silicon Valley. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem partners. Hi, I'm Peter Burris and welcome back to Big Data SV, theCUBE's again annual broadcast of what's happening in the big data marketplace here at, uh, or adjacent to Strata here in uh, San Jose. We've been broadcasting all day, we're going to be here tomorrow as well, over at the Forager uh, Eatery and place to come uh, meander, so come on over, spend some time with us. Now, uh, we've had a number of great guests, many of the thought leaders that are visiting here uh, in San Jose today around the big data marketplace, but I don't think any has traveled as far as our next guest. Uh, Juan Ho Sun is the CEO of Transwarp, come all the way from Shanghai, Juan Ho, it's once again great to see you on theCUBE, thank you very much for being here. Good to see you again. So, Juan Ho, the Transwarp as a company has become extremely well known for great technology. There's a lot of reasons why that's the case, but you have some interesting updates on how the technology is being applied, why don't you tell us what's going on? Okay, so, uh, uh, like recently, uh, we announced uh, the first audit of the TPC DS benchmark result. Uh, so, uh, uh, our product uh, called Inceptor, that is a SQL engine on top of Hadoop, uh, we already add uh, quite a lot of features uh, like uh, trans distributed transactions, like uh, full SQL support, so that it can mimic uh, like Oracle or traditional uh, DB2 and uh, those traditional database uh, features, so that we can pass the whole test. And uh, you know, uh, this SQL engine is also scalable because it's distributed, it's scalable. So uh, uh, the large benchmark like TPC-DS, uh, it starts from 10 terabytes, and uh, our uh, SQL engine can pass it without uh, much uh, uh, trouble. So I know that there have been other firms that have claimed to pass TPCCDS, mm -hmm. uh, but they haven't been audited. What does it mean to say you're audited? I presume that you, as a result, you've gone through some extremely stringent and, and specific tests to demonstrate that you could actually pass the entire suite. Yes, actually there is a third party auditor. They already audited our test process and the results for the past six, uh, five months. Uh, so it is fully audited. Uh, and um, uh, the reason why we can pass the test is because uh, actually there are two major reasons. For traditional databases, uh, they are not scalable uh, to process large data set. Uh, so they cannot pass the test. Uh, for Hadoop vendors, uh, because the SQL engine, uh, the features are not rich enough to pass all the tests. Uh, you know, there are uh, several steps uh, in the benchmark. Uh, and the SQL queries, there are 99 queries. Uh, the syntax is not supported by all hardware vendors yet. And also, uh, uh, the benchmark requires you to update the data uh, after the queries, and then rerun the queries uh, for multiple concurrent users. Uh, that means uh, you have to dis support distributed transactions. Uh, you have to make the update data consistent. consistent. Uh, so uh, uh, for Hadoop vendors, the SQL engine on Hadoop, uh, they haven't uh, implemented the distributed transaction capabilities. So that's why they failed to pass the benchmark. So I had the honor of traveling to Shanghai last year, going and speaking at your user conference and was quite impressed with the energy that was in the room as you announced a large number of new products. You've been very focused on taking what open source has to offer, but adding significant value to it. Mm -hmm. uh, in, as you said, you've done a lot with the SQL interfaces and, yeah. and, the, and the various capabilities of SQL on top of Hadoop. Where is Transwarp going with its products at today? How is it expanding? How is it being uh, organizing? How is it being used? We group these products into uh, three catalog, uh, including uh, big data, cloud, and uh, uh, AI and machine learning. So there are three categories. Uh, the, the big data, uh, we, uh, we upgraded the SQL engine, the streaming engine, and uh, uh, we have a, a set of tools called Transform Studio to help people to streamline the big data operations. And the second product line is uh, 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 data cloud. We call it uh, Transformer Data Cloud. Uh, so this product is going to be released in early in May uh, this year. 
So uh, this product, we build this product on top of Kubernetes. Uh, we uh, provide uh, Hadoop as a service, uh, data science as a service, AI as a service to customers. And uh, we allow people to create multiple tenants. And each tenant is isolated by uh, network storage CPU. Uh, they uh, are free to create the clusters and uh, spin up and uh, uh, turn it off. So uh, it can also scale to hundreds of cores. So this is the, I think this is the first uh, uh, we um, implement uh, like net network isolation and uh, storage persistency in Kubernetes so that it can support uh, HDFS and uh, all Hadoop components. And uh, because it is uh, elastic, uh, just like cloud computing, but uh, we run on bare model, uh, people uh, can consolidate the data, consolidate applications uh, in one place because all applications and Hadoop components are uh, containerized. That means uh, they are Docker images. Mm -hmm. We can spin up uh, uh, very quickly and uh, uh, scale to a uh, large, larger cluster. So this, cl this data cloud product uh, is very interesting for a large company because they usually have a small IT team. Uh, but they have to provide uh, the big data capability and uh, machine learning capability to uh, larger groups, like uh, 1,000 people. Uh, so they need a, a convenient way to manage the, all these big data clusters. And uh, they have to isolate the resources. So even they need a bidding system. So uh, this product is, uh, uh, we, we already have a uh, few big names in China, like China Post, Petro China, and uh, State Grid uh, of South China. So they are already deploying this uh, uh, data cloud for their internal customers. And China has a, has a few people, so I presume that you know China Post, for example, is probably a pretty big implementation. Uh, yes. So, uh, yeah. So uh, they have, but the IT team is uh, like uh, less than 100 people, but they have to support uh, thousands of uh, users. So that's why they uh, usually we deploy 100 cluster for each uh, application, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, today, uh, for large organization, they have lots of applications. Uh, they hope to leverage big data capability, but uh, their small team, IT team, cannot support so many applications. So they, they need a community way, like, uh, just like uh, we deploy Hadoop on pub, uh, public cloud. So we provide a product that allows you to uh, provide a Hadoop service in private cloud on bare model machines. So this is the second uh, product category. And the third is the machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence. We provide a data science platform uh, uh, a machine learning tool. Uh, that is an interactive tool that allows people to uh, create machine learning pipelines and models. Uh, we even uh, implemented some uh, automatic modeling capability that allows you to do feature engineering automatically or semi-automatically and uh, 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 to select uh, the best algorithms for you so that uh, the machine learning uh, uh, can be, uh, so everyone can be a data scientist. They can use our tool to quickly create models. And we also have some pro build models for different industry, like financial services, like banks, security companies, uh, even IoT. So we have different pre build machine learning models for them. They just need to modify the template, uh, then apply the machine learning models to their applications very quickly. So that probably like a less than, uh, for, uh, for example, for a bank cust customer, they just use it to, to uh, deploy a model in one week. It is very quick for them. Otherwise, in the past, they hire uh, a company uh, to build that application uh, to develop the models. It usually takes several months. But today, it, it is much faster. So uh, uh, today, we have three categories, like the big data cloud and uh, machine learning. Machine learning and AI. So three uh, products. And you've got some very, very big implementations. So you were talking about a couple of banks, but we were talking before we came on about some of the smart cities right. kinds of things that you guys are doing at enormous scale. Yes, so uh, like uh, we deployed our streaming product uh, for uh, more than 300 cities in China. Uh, so these clusters are connected together. Uh, so we use uh, streaming uh, capability to monitor the traffic uh, and send uh, uh, the information uh, from city to the central uh, government. Uh, so all the, uh, so the central repository um, uh, so whenever 
uh, illegal behavior on the road is detected, the, that information uh, uh, will be sent to the policeman uh, or the central repository within two seconds. Uh, whenever you uh, was, whenever you is you are seen by the camera uh, in any place in China, uh, the alerts will be sent out uh, within two seconds. So the the uh, the bad behavior is detected. It's identified as the location. The system also knows where the nearest police person is. And it sends a message and says, this car has performed something bad. Yeah, and you should stop that car uh, in the next station or in the next road, uh, across the road. Uh, so uh, it is, uh, uh, so today uh, uh, there are um, uh, tens of thousands of policemen. Uh, they depend on this system to work for their daily work. Interesting. George. So just a question on, it sounds like one of your sort of nearest competitors in terms of, let's take the open source community, at least the APIs, and in their case, open source, Huawei. Yeah. Like, have there been customers that tried to do a, a POC mm. with you and with Huawei and said, well, it took four months, you know, using the pure open source stuff, and it took, say, two weeks with your stack having, you know, being much broader and deeper. Are any examples like that? Uh, there are quite a lot. Like, uh, we have, um, um, more market share, like in financial services, uh, we have uh, about 100 bank users. Uh, and uh, so if we take all banks into account, uh, they, so for, for them, they already use Hadoop. So we, our market share is uh, uh, above 60 percentage. 60? Yeah, in financial services. Uh, so uh, we usually do POC uh, and uh, like run benchmarks, uh, run uh, their real workloads. And uh, usually it takes three, three days or uh, one week. They can find uh, we can speed up their workload uh, very quickly. Like uh, for Bank of China, they uh, they run their uh, they migrate their Oracle uh, workload to our platform, and they test uh, our platform and Huawei platform too. Uh, so uh, the first thing is they cannot migrate the whole Oracle workload to open source uh, Hadoop because uh, the feature. Uh, the missing features. Uh, we, we are able to support all these workloads uh, with very minor modifications. Uh, so the modification takes only several hours. And uh, we can finish the whole workload uh, within two hours. Uh, but uh, originally, they take, uh, uh, usually take Oracle like uh, uh, more than one day. Uh, wow. Uh, more than 10 hours to finish the workload. So uh, it is very easy to see the benefits quickly. Now that you have the, a streaming product also with that same SQL interface. Yes. Are you going to see a migration of applications that used to be batch to more you know, near real time or continuous? Or will you see a whole new set of applications that weren't done before because the latency wasn't appropriate? Yes, so uh, for, um, for streaming applications, uh, those real time applications they are mostly new applications. Uh, but uh, if we are using Storm API or Sparking, Spark Streaming API, uh, it, it, it is not so easy to develop your applications. And uh, uh, another uh, issue is uh, once you need to, so you, once you detect one new rule, you have to add those rules uh, dynamically to your cluster. Uh, so the IT operator, they do not have so many knowledge of writing Scala codes. They, they only know how to configure. Uh, probably they are, they are familiar with SQL. They just need to add one SQL statement to add a new rule so that uh, they can dynamically In your change. system? Yeah, in our system. So it is much easier for them to program streaming uh, applications. Uh, and uh, this, for those uh, customers, they don't have uh, real-time applications. They hope to do some like a real-time data warehousing. Uh, they uh, collect all this data from websites, uh, from uh, their usual, some uh, use sensors, like uh, Petro China, you know, uh, the oil company, the large oil company. Uh, they collect all the logistic information directly to our streaming product. Uh, in the past, they just collect them into Oracle and run the dashboard. So it only takes hours to see the results. But today, uh, their application can be moved to our streaming product with only a few modification because they are all SQL statements. 
and uh, uh, this application becomes real time. They can see the real time dashboard results in uh, several seconds. So Wang Ho, uh, you're number one in China. You're moving more aggressively to participate in the U.S. market. What's the, last question, what's the biggest difference between being number one in China, or the way that we're, uh, big data is being done in China, versus the way you're encountering big data being done here, uh, certainly in the U.S., for example. Is there a difference? I think uh, uh, there, are, there are some difference. Uh, so like, uh, uh, so in, uh, uh, some are same, like uh, customers usually request a POC. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, in China, uh, they usually, uh, uh, they, I think they focus more on the results. Uh, they focus on uh, what, your, uh, what benefit they, they can gain from your product. So we have to uh, prove them. So we have to uh, help them to migrate the application to see the benefits. Uh, I think in, in US, uh, they uh, focus uh, uh, more on technology than well, Chinese customers. Interesting, so they're more on technology here in the US, more in the outcome in China. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. Once again, uh, Wan Osu uh, from uh, CEO of Transwarp, mm -hmm. thank you very much for being on theCUBE. Thank you. And I'm Peter Burris with George Gilbert, my co-host, and uh, we'll be back with more from Big Data SV in San Jose. Come on over to the Forger and spend some time with us, uh, and we'll be back in a second. <laughs>